Hello everyone and welcome to this dev breakdown. Today I'm going to show you how I made these three solarpunk style buildings inside of Blender and Unity. This is not going to be an in-depth tutorial, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or on my Discord server. This is a short project that I made in my free time over a couple of days. Because it was only an experiment I made for fun, I didn't want to spend too much time on it. So my main goal was to be as efficient as possible. This means that I used a couple of paid assets to speed up my workflow, but I'll try to give some free alternatives for the people who want to try similar things. Let's start with the tower and the greenhouse, which followed a similar workflow. First of all, I looked at a few reference images because I was not very familiar with the solarpunk style. For those who don't know, it's essentially a utopian take on the future, where technology and nature go hand in hand. I drew a few simple ideas and I modeled them in Blender. I'm going for a realistic high fidelity style, but because of the camera angle and the relative size of the buildings, I didn't need to make anything too detailed. I mostly use simple functions like extrusion and translation. The tower was especially simple because it's modular, it's only one base piece which is repeated over and over using an array modifier. For the greenhouse I used a lattice modifier to bend the architecture um, in a more organic fashion. The second step was animating the apparition of the buildings. I didn't really have a plan, but I tried a few things and I'm quite happy with how it turned out. The tower was once again quite easy because it uses the same animation for every part. A simple translation, scale and rotation of the pieces. To make things look a bit more mechanical and stylized, I used the bounce easing from Blender, which you can get by selecting your keyframes and hitting the T key. The greenhouse was a bit more complex and I don't like it as much as the tower, but I think it works okay. Once again, I relied on different keyframe easings to make my simple animation more interesting. Once that was done, I was ready to bring the meshes and animation into Unity for texturing. Typically, you'd want to do that properly, either in Blender or in a dedicated software like Substance Painter, but I didn't have the time to hand paint every building, so I decided to go for a simpler approach. I made four materials that I reused on all of my buildings to give them a general sense of cohesion. So I made a main white material using a detail texture to give a bit of normal smoothness and albedo variation. I think I got this detail texture from the free Unity Book of the Dead demo um, from a few years back. I also created a secondary material that is a grass texture from a nature manufacturer pack, but you can get equivalent textures on free websites like Polyhaven. I made a glass material, which once again uses only a detail texture to add a bit of interest. And finally, an emissive material that adds a few highlights here and there. To make it playable, I created a basic script that allows the player to spawn these prefabs by clicking on the screen using raycasts and game object pooling. When they are activated, the game objects automatically play the apparition animation. Finally, I polished it by adding a few elements. First, vegetation, because the union of nature and technology is at the center of solar punk. I added a bunch of ferns, grass and ivy on top of the buildings and on the side. Once again, I used nature manufacturer assets, but you can find free alternatives on websites like Polyhaven. Or of course, you can make them yourself. I wanted to create a growing effect after the building was created, so I used the Vegetation Engine, which is an advanced vegetation shader and system that allows you to do this sort of things very easily using game objects. For a simpler and cheaper alternative, you could simply use twins to scale your individual meshes over time, to add a bit of juice and to try the new features of Unity 2022, 
I used one of the free Unity Smoke samples that uses six-way lighting. To make it feel a bit more like an actual game, I created some simple UI elements in Figma and I implemented them in my building system. Finally, to ground the buildings a bit more with the environment, I created a tile effect around them using the VFX graph. For the wall, I wanted something that could be different shapes to fit the player's needs. Because of that, I had to take a different approach from the tower and the greenhouse. So I made a modular building which is created procedurally inside of Unity at runtime. To do this, I needed two simple parts. First, a tower, which is going to spawn at every control point of the wall. And then a simple wall part, which is this hexagonal shape. I did make a simple appear animation inside of Blender for the tower, but the proper animation of the whole wall is made procedurally inside of Unity, so we'll get back to that a bit later on. I textured the tower with the same materials as the other building, but for the hexagonal wall parts, I had to use vertex color to mix multiple colors inside of a custom shader. Because as far as I know, the VFX graph only allows you to use one material per mesh. There are workarounds, of course, but this was just simpler for me. Because I wanted to allow the player to create any shape they want, I had to use blinds. I used the curvier sets because it's quite good and I know it's well, but for a free alternative, the recent Unity Splines package can probably do the job. When the player starts building a wall, I use raycasts based on their mouse position on the terrain. And whenever they click, I add a control point. Different types of splines can yield more or less organic results. Once the player confirms that they want to build a wall, I spawn a tower on each control point, with a slight delay each time. Then I need to send the spline data to the VFX graph. This used to be impossible, but graphics buffers now allow us to send an arbitrary amount of data. So I simply sample the curve every so often and store its position and rotation inside of a graphics buffer, which is then sent to the VFX graph. Inside the graph, I simply sample it and use some math to create a procedural wall with an appear animation and a bit of general movement using sign functions to make it seem more alive. Finally, I spawn some vegetation here and there, much like the other buildings, and I'm essentially done. This is it for this small breakdown. It was a really nice experience and I learned quite a bit while working on it. I will now be getting back to the usual devlogs, but if you have some ideas about small experiences like this that I could tackle in one video, feel free to send propositions in the comments and I might try some of them. If you like this type of videos, please subscribe and have a nice day.